Hey, what's going on everyone? Jace Two Cents here, and we're here at Micro Center in Tustin, California. You guys know that's our home Micro Center store. Uh, we're here free, actually featuring the Tech Bar today, and I got kind of a fun challenge here where uh, we're gonna see whether or not they can sabotage some PCs and I can figure out what's wrong with them as sort of like a little impromptu tech challenge. Uh, but first, logo. The Height Y70 Dual Chamber ATX PC case provides users the familiar look and feel of the Y60, but with an increased component compatibility and thermal performance. With four unique colorways and a beautifully crafted three-piece panoramic glass, the Y70 provides a clear window into the heart of your PC. Its expanded four-slot vertical GPU support with an included 4.0 PCIe riser cable provides ample room for the largest graphics cards, while additional space between the edge of the card and the glass provides improved airflow. Up to three 120 millimeter fans can be mounted below the GPU to provide a direct path of cooling, while up to 360 millimeter AIOs can be mounted to both the top and side. Y70 also provides up to 180 millimeters of clearance for air coolers. To learn more about the Height Y70, visit the sponsored link in the description below. So the cool thing about the tech bar, if you guys aren't aware, think of it as like a, kind of like a service center for your computer. It doesn't matter if it's one that you bought here or your own that you built at home. If you're having problems with your system, you can bring it here to help diagnose it, uh, get it fixed or repaired, make sure everything's running correctly. Let's say you came into the store and you bought some components and you wanted to have those installed because maybe you're not familiar with how to do it. You can also do that here as well. Um, you can also get general maintenance done here, virus scans, virus removal, data recovery, all sorts of stuff can be done right here at the tech bar. Uh, but to kind of put some of what they go through kind of to the test. Like I said, we, I had them secretly sabotage a couple of their power spec systems uh, and then kind of keep track of what they did and see whether or not I can go in there and actually figure out all of the problems. Um, I told them to just do everything from maybe might something might be considered what a new builder might accidentally do when putting together a system all the way to maybe things that are not just they're just intentionally not right that may not even necessarily go looking for because it's so unorthodox on the kind of problems we'd come across. So with that said, let's go ahead and head into the tech bar behind the scenes in their like work area and let's see what they've got ready for us. Okay, so here I am in the back area of the tech bar. This is where all like the repairs and upgrades and services are performed. So I thought it'd be fun, like I kind of already alluded to, that it'd be fun to have them sabotage some of their open box systems here to see whether or not I could figure out what's wrong with them. Sort of like what we did with the Linus Tech, tech Challenge with Steve, if you will. So I kind of gave them free reign. Do whatever you want to the systems. I didn't, I think they're above and beyond what a typical system that would come in for service is like, but I just thought that this would be kind of a fun idea. So I don't know anything about what's wrong with them. I was told they kind of went ham with them, but that all the parts in there work. So no part swap should be necessary, I'm hoping, because there's no parts here to test with, but I have no idea what's wrong with these. So we're gonna kinda go through these one at a time. I already see one thing on this system here that's sort of bugging me, and that is the fact that the cooler fan is backwards. It's pulling air through. So if you look right here, you can see this deep cool fan is pulling air through that way. And you never want a single fan to be pulling air through a heat sink because it could pull in through the sides. So you want it to be pushing air through. So that's one thing I'm gonna be changing on there. But past that, I don't know. So let's go ahead and just turn it on and see what we got. That's gotta be the first thing before I go unplugging and moving things around. Everything appears to be plugged in so far in terms of power and stuff. Let's see, the eight pin looked like, nope, we're good. Power supply on. Oh, that's a good start. Okay, well, the fan's not turning. So this fan is not turning, but the RGB is plugged in. This fan is turning, but the RGB is not plugged in on that one. So we could check that in a, in a second. That's not something that's gonna be detrimental to making the system boot though. We need to see whether or not we actually get a post. We have a red light. Not sure, nope, still going through posts. Well, it looks like it went through all the posts and succeeded, but we don't have an image. So let's see. We have a hard drive light flashing too, if it shut there. So it was posted. I don't know why we're not getting an image. So who knows if this GPU is even plugged in. So now we're gonna take a look at the back. You know, usually a tech working on a computer would have some information. Customer states, no, it's like just rolled in, right? Customer states has slight vibration. The A-arm is rusted off, right? Kind of a thing. But I have no idea what any of the issues are with this system or what the problems could have potentially been. So, this is all just blind now. I'm trying to figure out why that RGB was not on that top fan, but that's kind of not a problem if we're not posting. So not only was the super zip tied tight, the VGA, as you can see, was not even plugged in. So that's why we weren't getting any VGA signal. I'm wondering too, if maybe 
EPS was one of these not plugged in as well. Could be. Looks like neither EPS. Well, I don't know. If EPS wasn't plugged in, I don't think we would actually get power at all. Like power button wouldn't do anything. They tried to hide it by having that all bundled down super tight. So they made me actually have to actually pull the power supply. I'll worry about the heatsink fan later because it's not that huge of a deal. Like it's still getting cooling passively through the tower. Okay, now the lights are going through much quicker on their tests. Oh wait, I'll push the RAM all the way back in now because it wasn't there. So, so far we found unplugged power or GPU cable for the power supply. Fan is unplugged and backwards. RGB is not working on that fan. I don't know if that's intentional or unintentional. And the RAM was not seated all the way. There we go, got blue light. Okay, so at least we're gonna post now. I'm not even gonna worry about the BIOS and XMP and all that until I figure out what's happening with that, those fans there. Like as far as I can tell, they, that RGB should be working. But I hate daisy chain fans because it becomes very difficult to trace them. Like, especially when they're all like tangled up like this and then taped together. Regardless, I need to take care of the CPU fan first. Where do I want to plug that one in then? Because they have something plugged in the CPU fan right now that's not the CPU fan. So I'm gonna switch CPU fan to there. It's not a lot of headers on this motherboard for fans. That's part of the problem. Okay, so I flip this fan around. Um, it's a little crooked. I guess I could make it a little straighter. It's off a couple, but that's an easy fix. There was another fan. One of the front case fans was plugged into the CPU header. So I unplugged that one. I'm gonna move it back to a chassis header and leave the CPU fan plugged into the CPU header. That way it can go up and down with speeds with uh, PWM load. And I'm gonna fix this fan because it's now bugging me. All right, so I figured out why the front RGB wasn't working now. Infinite power! <laughs> you just had it plugged into itself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you taped it even with the tape. You didn't give me a knife. Nope, nope, I, <laughs> nope. I gotta do this the, the, the worst way possible. All right, give me the damn knife. Oh no, wait, I got it. <laughs> so since I knew the GPU fan, or excuse me, the CPU fan is working, I'm gonna take this guy off of here, plug him into here. Okay. Okay, yeah, you don't get extra points for causing your own problems. I would have so many points. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're good. Let's see. No, I, I said that for a reason, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. What? Look at oh. the computer. <laughs> ha. Nice. I would have noticed it. So he's adamant that I run stress tests. I have a feeling there might be some thermal paste missing from this cooler. Or one of the coolers or something. Because he's adamant that I run stress tests. Okay, here we go. So our platform, I can finally see it's a 5600X3D. Wow, this actually is not a slouch of a system here. Uh, on a B550MC motherboard, 32 gigs of RAM. So both our RAM, gigs, are, both our gigs, <laughs> both our sticks of RAM are showing. They're not at XMP, but that's okay. Everything's probably been reset, so that'd be easy enough. Uh, let's go to XMP profile. There we go. We'll just enable that. All right, so I'm in the OS. It's actually Windows 10. They were like, you might want to check your BIOS again. So I don't know. I'm going to see what I can see here first. Committed two slots use two of four. So both dims are, are there. I was curious, like maybe one of these was a, a, a weird unmatched something or another. So, but it seems to be all matched at 3200. What's our GPU? It's an RTX 46. That's a 4060? Wow, that's so tiny. I, I guess I'm just so used to the other ones now. I don't know. I can't, if the CMOS battery might be under the GPU, I have a feeling they've removed the CMOS battery. And what would end up happening at that point is when you shut it down, it should still stay powered up with settings because it's plugged into the power supply if that were the case. But I have a feeling there may not be a CMOS battery in here. Yeah, I have no doubt you guys are probably talking about BIOS uh, CMOS battery, but you have to turn the power supply off if that's gonna be the case because it stays persistent. It, it, the motherboard stays powered through the power supply until you turn off that power switch. When you turn off the power switch, if there's no battery installed, then the CMOS settings will reset. So I could have turned the system off a hundred times until I turn off that power supply. It would have stayed, it kept the settings st uh, stored in there, but it's not gonna be guaranteed that it's gonna immediately reset its settings. If you turn the system off, let's say you get a power outage, or you unplug it or something, your dog unplugs it, your CMOS battery is bad. It sits there overnight, all the caps are gonna drain and then the settings will completely uh, return to what they were. Okay, so it is a CMOS battery that's just unplugged. Okay, so I found the CMOS battery. It's one of those weird ones where they have it like glued in sideways. So you can see it right here. That's the CMOS battery glued in there, but it's in this little harness, but the harness was unplugged. 
So what should have happened, and I wouldn't have caught this, only because of the fact that once the system's plugged in and it doesn't lose power long enough, it would not have reset its settings. So that would have been a missed item, mostly due to the length of time I'm sitting here with the system. And then there's one other thing I wanna check for. I'm gonna do a full shutdown. Yeah, I don't feel like these GPU fans ever turn. Even the zero RPM fan, when you first turn on the power so the computer, the fan should spin up. And usually that's just for dust, it moves dust and kind of does a full post on the, on the GPU as well. But those are not turning. I have a feeling on the bottom side, those fan plugs might've been accessible and they unplugged them. I have a feeling of that. Told you it was gonna be accessible. Yay! You know, the only reason I even thought about this is because of the fact that I just noticed that the fans were not spinning up on initial startup. And we just repaired one of these harnesses on an EVGA GPU that had a bad fan harness. So I just was like, I bet you it was accessible. Okay, let's see if I can remember all of the issues. Uh, number one was the CPU fan was installed backwards. Number two, the GPU, in the order I kind of found them, the GPU harness was unplugged. The RAM was not seated all the way on the right side. XMP was not enabled. Nothing else was really messed with in the uh, BIOS that I could tell. The front fan was turning, but had no RGB because it was like plugged into itself. So I fixed that. CPU fan was not plugged in the CPU header. It was un unplugged entirely. So I plugged that back in the CPU header and plugged the chassis fan back in the chassis header. That was one, right? You were looking for the, that I would have the headers in the right order? Okay, um, let's see. The GPU fan, or actually before that, the CMOS harness was unplugged for the CMOS battery. And then the GPU fans were unplugged from the bottom of the GPU. And I think that's all of them. All right, now the first one's done. Is it really 11 o'clock? Okay, so. <laughs> all right, system number two. We're probably not gonna do number three, I think because of how long it's taken already for the first one. But uh, this one, I've been warned might take a little more time. So let's just see what we got here. First of all, I like to do an initial, kind of a once over. All right, I don't like how the RAM sticks are next to each other. So that's single channel, that's an easy one. What is this platform anyway? It's Intel platform. Well, the f one of the problems I see is it's a Cooler Master AIO because no one has enough time to say the whole name. I see a couple of CPU or a couple of fan headers that are off right here. So you see these two right here? There's two fan headers that are off. That's a DC fan, that's a PWM fan. That's probably the splitter for the AIO. I don't even know if those are the correct ports, but I'm just gonna go ahead and break it probably. This is why they just unplugged them halfway. They knew that my fat fingers were gonna fit down in there. Okay, that's visually all I can see so far. So I'm not even gonna open the back yet. Typically I like to just see if it'll post which it more than likely won't, because this is the whole point of this challenge, which means I'm doing this for no reason at all. And, yep, that's what I figured. Uh, power switch is plugged into the power LED. So that's this guy right here on the bottom. See, power SW, that's plugged in all the way to the left. That would be power LED. And it's kind of hard to see in there. Yay, <laughs> I was like, wait that a minute. That was a weird fake out. <laughs> It happens with Intel systems. This is a higher end platform. You can tell by this motherboard. I should have switched the RAM already, but I'm not too concerned with that. I just want to see if we at least get an image. We do, okay. Done. <laughs> just kidding, is the pump turning? Yes, the pump is turning. I can feel the vibration. Fans are turning, yep, yep. That's turning. Those are turning the right direction. See on the surface right now, Oh yeah, these fans were turning. I just saw them slow down. So the GPU fans were turning, but on the surface, it's like, this just seems like a fully working computer, but we know better than that because I asked them to do stuff. Okay, well the fans are plugged in, so that's good. What is this card? This is a 4070. Okay, well hang on to that, Nick. No one's <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that it posted means the RAM is at least seated enough. Satisfying click. Okay, CMOS battery is installed. Right there, I can see it. <laughs> okay, we're in the BIOS. My CPU is at 53. I find this to be a bit warm. What is this? A Z690, 54, 13th gen, 13700K idling at 54 degrees Celsius in the BIOS on an AIO. This might end up, I have a feeling this, if they're gonna, if it's going up now, 55, 54. This is one I feel like they might've screwed around with the thermal paste on. 
Do I need thermal paste? You either do or you don't. That's <laughs> 55C at idle in the BIOS is not okay. <laughs> Just saying. All right. The cooler immediately was like burnt sideways. So that means there's clearly nothing in there. Well, yeah, look at that. That is one clean CPU right there. You know, what I love about PC Building Simulator is it will also let you do that. PC Building Simulator really is a, a therapeutic just and because the parts look so I d correct, because they really are like image quality scans for the, for the models, you can mix and match and play around with what components look like on that. And they're always adding new stuff. I know it sounds like an ad, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only saying that because my daughter came to the studio the other day and built a computer, my youngest daughter, because she was like, I want to build a computer. So we're not taking it home. She's like, I don't care, I just want to build one. I told her, I said, you know, there's a game where you can do this all day. She's like, what? I want it. So. Did you somehow break it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you somehow break it? So he has two different speed RAMs in here. RAMs? <laughs> RAMs. 6,000 and 5,600. So when I went to enable XMP, you can put mis mismatch sticks in. It's only going to XMP to the slowest RAM stick. Yay. Okay, so now we can rebox these to the correct. <laughs> so I'm going to take out the 5,600 because nobody wants to play with you anymore. You didn't look at the capacity, huh? Uh, yeah, they're both 32. I think they're both 32. But they matched on the part number there. Yeah, 16 times two. So it's it's a 32 gig kit. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Which one is this? Oh yeah, it's a 64 gig matched it or kit. <laughs> All right. So as soon as we go to the 6,000 megahertz. RAM, we're gonna end up going to 64 gigs of RAM. So we had a 56 gig or 56 gigahertz, a 5600 megahertz, uh, 16 by two, and a 6032 by two. So I guess if I had looked at the bus a little longer, I would have seen the capacity was gonna be what? 16 plus 32, so 48. <laughs> we got a legitimate blue screen in the middle of all this. It said, That's not part of it, it said it? memory management. <laughs> <laughs> so that was not part of it. I would, I, that's one of those things where I would probably leave XMP enabled and roll it back like 200 megahertz, like 5,800. Uh, okay, so let me install Prime95 because they gave me that. So I'm assuming I need to use that for some reason. 85C, 99C, 100C. Instantly 100C. It's throttling so hard it can't even stop the... the <laughs> yeah. I suspect these brackets are upside down, so it's not making proper tension. I'll be able to tell right now when I take it off and check the thermal paste. Oh, there's plastic on there. Yay! So I never even checked the bottom of the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> he actually got got by that. This was a used system. Did you just find one from a different one? Okay. Well, look how nice and spread our thermal paste is now. That's it. We did that on purpose to show you guys the right way to spread thermal paste. You would think I would have learned my lesson of taking stuff and green like, what's going on down in there? And then putting it back without looking at the thing. Considering I did that with the GPU today, I even told Jeremy about the time I did that with the cover for the SSD, it was stuck to the cover. I have a feeling we're gonna be fine now. Hey, 82. I hope you guys have learned something today. Always check the stupid plastic on your cooler. Although this was not, this was not a new build. I would not have expected that plastic to be there. Like a new PC that somebody put together, like they put it together, I put it together and it's running hot. What's the matter? If it was all new parts, I might've suspected that. But with all the like old human skin inside of this, I would have never considered that to be the issue. So they literally went and found one and stuck it on there. Um, the other thing you should really take away from this is that you guys don't have to rely on people like me because Micro Center does have the tech bar, which is full of techs that are here to help with installing your new components you may have bought at the store, maybe fixing or upgrading a system that has a problem or just general you know, maintenance on a PC if you're not comfortable with doing it yourself. My channel is all about helping you be able to do it on your own, but some people are just not comfortable with that. So obviously the tech bar exists. Anyway, I go, hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Um, I have no problems making myself look like a moron missing simple stuff um, for the sake of your guys' learning potential. But uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here. Jeremy can clean up the mess. That's the best part about coming to Micro Center is I don't have to clean it, he does. So, or whoever he makes do it, but whatever. Time to get out of here, guys. Thanks for watching as always. We'll see you in the next one.